Hi, my name is Julia Silgi, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. Today, in this screencast, we are going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set about Stranger Things. So, um, there will be spoilers, I'm sure. We're going to be looking at the dialogue from the four seasons of Stranger Things, and um, we're going to build an unsupervised machine learning model. We're going to use topic modeling to discover what the topics are in the dialogue of Stranger Things. Um, we're going to use tidy text to do some um, to convert uh, some of the output of the topic model that we'll be using into some convenient data frame formats that you can use for visualizations, tables, um, summarization, all any of that any of that kind of thing that you want to do. Um, tidy text has been able to do this for um, some of the output of the, this kind of topic model, the structural topic model, STM. Uh, it's been able to do this with some kinds for a long time, but um, just this week I had a new functionality to be able to use different metrics to identify important words. The two new metrics are FREX, which stands for um, frequency and exclusivity, so words that are, ha um, are have like a weighted um, uh, uh, a metric that is like weighted between those two things and lift, which is another way to look at the um, pri probabilities and combine it with the word counts. So um, <clears throat> to use the functionality I'm showing today, as of today, you'll need to install from GitHub. Um, you'll install tidy text from GitHub specifically. So let's, um, let's learn about Stranger Things. All right, let's get started. I, I'm pretty excited about this because I do um, love Stranger Things. So there is, um, there's a couple of data sets here. The one that I'm going to use is one that has the, um, the text data uh, for each episode. So let's, um, let's take a look at this and see what we have. So we have information on season, episode, and line, and then um, there's stage direction. And there's dialogue, start time and end time. So the stage direction um, involves, you know, snorts, all chuckling. And then also says like Lucas or Lucas and Will speaking together and, and whatnot. And then the dialogue is line by line here. So I think what I want to do is focus on just the dialogue. So sometimes like if there's only you know, here the boys are fighting and so there's no dialogue. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this raw data, I'm going to filter it, not is NA on the dialogue like this. And then the other thing I think I'm going to do is the season is a number here, but let me just like, um, so season, let's make that, um, like I'd, I could use like glue or I'll just use paste here and I'll say season, season like that so that we have this. So it's a, a character here. That'll just make things a little bit easier as I, um, as I move forward. All right, let's call this dialogue like so. And that is good. There we go. All right. So. Um, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of some exploring. Um, so let's tokenize tidy text. So trans tokenize and transform this from um, one line per row to one token per row. So I'm going to take dialogue. I'm going to use unnest tokens. Whoops. And I'm going to uh, untokenize into Word from dialogue like that. And let's call this tidy dialogue like so. So I am going to save this tokenized version because um, I think I'm going to use it in a couple different ways. Um, you know, so now I can, for example, tidy dialogue, I can count the words. This is going to be probably, you know, not too exciting. Um, you know, this is, these are very common words in speech, you, I, the, uh, and so forth. Um, I could count by season, but I'm sure that's not going to be any different, right? Like what words are most common, what season? We can see that season four has the most dialogue overall. And I, if I remember it, I think it has the most um, episodes, right? Because it had two sections. 
episode. Whoops. Yeah, so this is lines. No, I, I want to just count. Uh, I want to say, let's say distinct season episode. Oh my gosh. And then, <laughs> and then count season like this. Oh no, it's not that different. Only nine episodes in season four, but more talking in season four. Um, by somewhat, which is, which is interesting. Okay. So, so we, we can find this kind of thing. Um, but I'm going to do um, some EDA here that you could argue maybe is a little bit model based. Um, but it is super helpful. So we're going to use, um, the tidy low, the package tidy low, which what it does is it, um, it helps us compute log odds, specifically weighted log odds. That helps us weight logs odds using, by default, um, an uninformative prior so that things that we count only a few times get um, like regularized towards the, the mean. So we, we have a, like a, a, our log odds aren't so skewed for things that we have only seen a few times. So let's take the tidy dialog. Let's count... Just like we did before, season word, sword equals true. Um, so this is the most common words uh, per season. And then we're going to bind the log odds. So we're going we're gonna to say within the set of the four seasons um, and the feature of the words, which, um, what, what, um, words are more likely to come from different seasons. So that's uh, that log odds. And is this weighted log odds where we account for, um, we account for how often we see different words. So like the, the law, the way, the log odds for you, I, and the, um, the weight there would be like very low because we see it so many times. Um, we don't need to shift it very much where we would need to shift the value for the really um, uncommon words. So let's, um, let's group by season and let's take the top, the top log odds weighted words in each. Let's take like the top 10 and then ungroup that. Uh, okay, so some of these words are very uncommon, even after we did, and I don't think that's super interesting, so I am going to put a filter here. Um, so that we see words that are used pretty frequently during the season, not just like five times or something during the season. All right, nice. So this is good. We've got f t 40 words here because for um, four seasons, 10 per word. But let's um, let us make a plot of this so we can see what's going on. Let's put the log odds weighted on the x axis, the word on the y axis. Let's do fill equals season, and then um, a bar chart. like so, and then we're gonna make a new little facet for each season, like that. And we'll do scales equals free. All right, so we're gonna find, um, for each season, what are the words that are most likely to come from that season? So let's say labs, y equals null, because I think you can tell those are words. Um, let's use the reordered within, so mutate, word equals reorder within. This is a function that is in tidy text. So if you say we, within, uh, we want to reorder word by the log odds, weighted log odds within um, a season. And then we add something else here. We add uh, a scale. Whoops, I forgot the pipe there, scale y reordered, and that lets us, so it takes two, two things in the pipe here to make this work. Nice. Okay, so season one 
it's about Barb, sad. Um, you know, it's all about Will. We hear people talking about Will, people saying mom a lot. Season two, the introduction of Bob, also, also so sad. Um, the, you know, rainbow, rainbow and sunflower. We saw that imagery in season two. Max was introduced in season two. Season three, three is about the Russians and the, and scoops and a funny Susie, um, Robin. And season four, Eddie, the new character, Vecna, Yuri, who was new, Chrissy, who was that person who was killed. Anyway, a lot of um, a lot of proper nouns here. So, like, these are the highest log odds words per season. Like, you're not going to see the word Vecna in season one. Is basically what we're what we're seeing here. So this is, uh, I it's a little. I don't know if we call this EDA or not because it is model based, like. You use the, um, it's like, this is like an empirical um, Bayesian kind of thing to do, but um, I think I'll, I'll call it exploring the data. I'll, I'll call it um, EDA here. Uh, all right, it's time to train a topic model now. So this is what, this is why I'm doing this, um, this, uh, this screencast today. So to uh, do a, um, topic model, we don't want our tidy data set. We want to transform it to a sparse matrix. So um, for for um, the what like document are we going to use? Let's use an episode. So that means this data set is going to be fairly small. So let's make a, an episode an episode uh, variable here. So let's paste season together with episode um, like that. So now we have this new document, this new document variable, which is this pasted together. Let's show you what that looks like. So we've got the document. So season one, episode one, season four, episode seven. So those are our documents, are the episodes. And then we will um, count how many in each episode how many times is each word used? Um, I think to make the data set smaller, I'm going to only keep words that are used more than five times. And then I will use this function cast sparse. Um, so I cast, so first I need the row. So it is a document term matrix that I'm making. So I put the document on the row, the term on the Y, and what goes into the matrix, like in the elements, is this N here. So let's call this dialogue sparse. Whoops. So I'm making a, oh my gosh. Okay. I am making a, um, sparse matrix. So I'm, I'm casting from a, um, casting from a, uh, tidy format to a matrix format, a, a non tidy format, which is great for building when you need to do math and do like a machine learning model. Okay, so I've got the data set that I'm going to use. Like I said in the intro, this is an unsupervised um, machine learning approach. We don't have labels here. We just got a big matrix that we're going to try to learn topics from. Let's um, load the STM package, which is my current favorite um, implementation of topic modeling in R. I'm going to set a seed, and then I am going to make a topic model. I am going to use um, just a lot of the defaults here. So the data that goes in is here. The most important thing in topic modeling, like the most important hyperparameter is K. K. Um, this is like K, think about it like K and K-means, where it's a hyperparameter. We don't, there's no way to learn from the data fitting the model one time what the right value for K is. It's something you have to say ahead of time. So you can try a whole bunch of values and find the best one according to some metrics. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that today because this data set is actually quite small. Like this, I just have like a 34 row data set. You know, this is a, this is a pretty small data um, small matrix. So what I'm just gonna, I don't want to set it to four because that's the number of episode of, uh, seasons we have. Um, instead let's set it to something higher, you know, just, let's just do five. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So let's get it started here. So it converts super fast because this is a, um, whoops, did I do this wrong? No. Okay. Um, 
So that was really fast. Okay, so this is a five topic topic model on a data set that is, you know, fairly small. So it, it, it went and it did the whole thing. So we can kind of get a overall view of it by running summary. So we have the five topics here. We're going to explore this in a little more detail, but notice uh, one thing just to keep in mind here is like, or to notice here is that the highest probability words are all really boring. <laughs> They're all like you, I, the, to, uh. So in topic modeling, um, there's research like, like simulation studies that show that, um, you probably don't want to remove those stop words. Um, they do help you learn uh, topics that are better in quality by basically every meth measure that we have. So we don't want to take them away. But also, if I want to say something about these topics, like understand them, uh, it, those are not very helpful words because the highest probability words in all topics are these are these just regular words that you need to discuss any of these topics, which in this case are like all dialogue things. So people who work on topic models have um, have come up with some of these other kinds of um, metrics that that tell you what words are important in that topic by other definitions not the highest probability which in these cases are all very pretty much the same but um, other other important ways to say what other ways to say what words are important okay so let's start with um, the bo those boring words. So, um, you know, I'm looking at something over here with summary, um, and there are some kind of built-in plot methods in STM, but if you want to make any kind of custom visualization or handle these in any kind of custom way, you really want this out in a tidy data format that will help you um, use tools that you're probably familiar with to um, to deal with this. And so tidy text has support for that. So you first we can get the beta matrix. So this is the same as saying that uh, matrix equals beta. This is the default, the default. So this is the topic word probability. What is the prob probability that a given um, word is generated from a given topic? So we could, um, let's see, let's try to find, I don't know, like the top 10 for each, um, for each topic. So we'll say slice max um, beta n equals 10 like this. So these are the top, the top probability, highest probability words from each topic. Let's ungroup them. Um, let's get rid of that beta and just make like a like a list for each of these. Um, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna need something called no. Well, yeah, I'm probably gonna need inside of the group a rank to make this work out nicely. So it, this means I could have done slice mac on the rank. Uh, wait. <laughs> Um, is that right? Uh, sure. Okay, like this, if we arrange it. So, and then, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Arrange minus beta. Is this right? Let's just do this. Um, okay, so you, you, so let's get the fives. You... I, okay, I think I did this right. Okay, great. We'll get rid of the betas. We have the ranks and then I can use pivot wider. Pivot wider. So I'm gonna say, I can try, I like to make a little table that tells us for each um, topic, what are the highest probability words? So I'll say names from topic, values from term. I think like that, is that right? Yes, good, okay, except uh, there's something called names glue. Yes, that's what I want. So I can just use a glue. Um, I think it's name like that. Like you can put name or value there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, nice, that's what I want. Okay, and then let's get rid of the rank and let's do knitter cable, or you could use some nicer table if you want. Okay, here it is. For each of the, oh, the topics are in a weird order. 
Uh, how do I make that in a normal order? Okay. Um, let's see. So if we wanted to do this, it's an int. We're, oh, okay. I'll arrange by topic right here. There we go. Okay. Topic one, UIV2. Topic two, UIVA. You know, like, so here are these very common words. They're the highest probability for each of these um, topics. Now let's look at some of these other metrics. So in tidy text, before about the week that I'm doing this, there wasn't really nice, like, fluent support for getting out any of these other kinds of words that are measured in to, to do any of these other kinds of things. But I just merged in support for tidying these different, um, what are matrices, you know, to get nice, um, nice uh, formats for them. So first is the F, the FREX, I think is how people say it. So um, you can change the matrix. So instead of the beta matrix, you want the FREX matrix, which here is in a tidy format. So, um, if we want to see what what is this, if you go to um, this the function in STM that you you hand it a matrix. So what tidy text is doing under the hood is handing the matrix, handing the um, vector of word counts, and then you can pass this in through the dots. Just change it if you want. So what it is, so it's words that are high frequency and exclusivity. So it's a, it's a, um, it balances words that are frequent, i.e. high probability, and words that are, um, exclusive, meaning they come from one, um, they come from one topic, but more than it comes from the other topics. So you don't want completely exclusive words because they're really rare, but um, but you can you want this you want to balance those. So it's kind of like a weighted kind of a thing. So so here's the paper. We can read how FRX is um, uh, co computed, but it looks like this. Um, and so you can. Um, uh, you know, you can look at the underlying code to see how this works. But what we do is we're getting the high, high frex words right here. And so let's take all of this. Um, instead of slice max, let's say like slice head, because these are no longer, um, uh, these just give you the, um, the top, it returns the top words. It doesn't return like it just returns a rank list. It doesn't actually return the value um, for now at least. Uh, so we can just want the top 10. Uh, I think we can add rank. We'll take out this. We'll do this, this. Yeah, okay, like that. Whoops, one slice, not beta. There we go. Okay, so here are the highest FREX words for this topic. So we've got um, red, um, buyers, um, Nina, we, in topic two, we've got Enzo, Ghostbusters, <laughs> um, topic three, Billy, um, Eddie, topic four, Dart, um, you know, life, anything to after. So five is... Um, are is these kinds of words. So these are the highest Frex words. And I'm sure you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put lift in here. So if we look at what lift is, it is another one of these like ways of finding important words. So here is the um, equation for it. But you take that topic word distribution by the word count. Um, so it's another one of these weighted things to help you find words that are um, important for how many times they are used. So if we look at this for um, with the high lift words for the topics for um, Stranger Things, we see um, Clark and Girlfriend and Flayer, Flay, the Mind Flayer, um, California, the Hellfire Club, and whatnot. So I, you can probably start to guess like which of these topics are season four, if that's familiar to you, and um, Demogorgon, you know, season five is probably the first season and whatnot. Um, but we don't know that yet. We just are like, I'm just kind of like 
inferring that because I've watched the show. Um, so now, so what's new in tidy text is the ability to get these um, other ways of identifying important words. So if you, I encourage you to um, try it out if you do this kind of work. So let us um, get the last kind of matrix out actually. So we will tidy the topic model one more time. Um, and the matrix that we will use is the gamma matrix. So this is also sometimes called the theta matrix. And it is the, um, like if I do it here, it is the document topic probability. So what probability do we have that a given document, or the, that a document um, and topic are connected here? We can also, let's see, let me do it like this. So we can send in the document names because we have those in the, there you go, nice. Okay, document, topic, what's the probability of that um, topic being generated in that document? Let me make this a little easier to see, like so. Okay, so let's call this, um, well, let's just keep going actually. So let's, um, let's separate, that document into C season episode. I think that would work with just that. Yep. Excellent. I think there's something. I don't think it matters. Okay, let's call this episodes parsed. So what we have here is um, we have the these probabilities of the topics connected to the season, which remember we didn't um, we didn't train the model with an awareness of season. Um, the, the documents are like just in a big pile, the episodes, like the model did not know about it, but we can look at it after the fact. There's, there's several different ways of doing this. Here we're just going to literally visualize it, but we can look at it using statistical methods if we want to. So let's make a visualization here. So topic, let's make that a factor because I'm about to make some visual, like visualize it uh, and I don't want it to be a number. Okay, so let's put Topic on the x-axis, gamma on the y-axis. Let's make this nicely colored. And then let's make some box plots. Uh, let's make them kind of translucent. Um, and we don't need the legend. And the whole, kind of the whole point of this is to look at it by season, like so. All right, nice. Well, we can make this a little bit better. So let's, um, I mean, I think the only other thing I'm gonna do is change the, you can, so this is, this works pretty well. You can pass in an expression here and it will um, make a nice little Greek letter for you there if you want, which is, which is nice. Okay, so let's look at this result here. So season one is mostly topic five. Season two is mostly topic one. Season three has a little bit of topic one and more of topic two, but neither one is like super high. And then season four is topic three, which we, um, you know, is kind of what we said when we were looking at those important words. So the, um, the, this is what topic models do. They discover in your un, in your unlabeled data, they discover what, to, what topics there are and what um, uh, like like what's going on uh, in the way word language is used together. Um, so if we wanted to, we could you know we were looking at this visually, but we could also use um, estimate effect like this to. Um, estimate a regression where here the outcome is the proportion of each document that about a topic and the covariants are like metadata like we for so for example we could we could use the um, season as the metadata there and see how it changes so that would be another way to do this um, in the interest of time I won't do that but um, sum up that if you're interested in these topic models I encourage you to try out the new functionality 
All right, we did it. I, um, if you are someone who works with text data, topping modeling, and you want, wanted to be able to use these kind of different ways of identifying important words using tidy data principles, I encourage you to install um, tidy text from GitHub, try it out and give me any feedback before I um, do a release with this new functionality. I, um, I do really love Stranger Things, so this was a lot of fun and um, I will see you next time.